Now, if you want to stick around, we'll do the Q&A session and I'll answer all your questions to the best of my abilities and we'll go from there. All right, so let's jump into that. Do, 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 do. <laughs> how, much, how much is plasma in the black market? I don't know. Paddington says, I'm not your dad. It's true. Three pieces, high bearish, Rob. Hey, it is what it is. <laughs> Wasn't aware of the limits on cash transaction. What does, that, does legal tender even mean? When will we be able to sell sweat coins? Not for a while, because you got to understand, for sweat coins, they're, they're not even a crypto yet. Not until September, September 12th, I believe. Hmm. Marky says, hey, Rob, my stepdaughter got laid off from my trust capital and got paid 10 grand. It was more people in there. It's not sure what's going on, but it's suspicious. It's sus, as the kids say. Uh, yeah, but it, think of it this way. A lot of different companies are laying off people. Apple, Meta, Coinbase, except for Binance. Binance seems to be going strong. Mm, yeah. <laughs> no. Uh, let's see. Hello, everybody. Hello at all the wrenches today. Cash is always king. I don't really get angry anymore. I'm too old. It's just, I got stuff to do and that's not it. Ah, here we go. Thank you. Gravity. These were the ones that were included in the, uh, the SEC filing for uh, insider trading. AMP, Rally. DDX, XYO, Rary, LCX, Power Ledger, DFX Finance, and Chromatica. Yeah, those are the ones that uh, the SEC pretty much just said they're all securities. The Department of Justice and uh, the CFTC came in and said, no, it's not what it is, but damage is already done. Let's see. Very disconcerting. It is. Jacob says, so is our crypto and wagers going to be gone forever? Depends. And if you haven't, we did a video. did a video yesterday. Uh, it was with um, a bankruptcy lawyer, uh, 15 years, and we just went over the Celsius first day uh, pleadings or or documents, and he just laid it down. What is what is bankruptcy? What are the different chapters? What usually leads to a successful bankruptcy? And really, what it come down came down to was consensus. Uh, so watch that video from yesterday, and it explains a lot. But what it sounds like uh, is that there's a lot of offers for Voyager right now. Not the junk FTX offer, but more offers being out there, and maybe we'll get our crypto back. I don't think we're going to get it all back. I think it's going to be, we're going to take a, quite a big haircut and then move from there. Yeah, so that's it. And hopefully it doesn't take forever. Oh man. I just paid 33% to shove my AMP junk from Coinbase to a wallet. You do that. crypto.com yeah you can do it it's just i think it might take a hit because of the price action but if you believe in the project it doesn't really matter if you're here for three five ten years maybe not again not investment advice <laughs> yeah so quandry says i was just watching a ben cohen video where he was comparing ada during last bear market with this one compared to last bear market. I mean, we haven't even entered accumulation phase yet yeah, it could be true, which is which is why, like, I know a lot of people, me and Ben are kind of on the same wavelength about this market. I just don't see how everything's going to go up and people are like, oh, it'll be and this is the, the worst it can get. I just don't see that. And then people will always say, ah, Rob, you got PTSD from 2017. Everything's going to be fine. All right, well, I said the same thing in 2020, 2021. I was like, I don't think this is going to last forever. 
people are like, oh, no, no, but you don't understand because the institutions are here. They're going to bail us out and they're never going to sell because it is like, okay, sounds like a plan. Here we are. I remember this beautiful tweet from Elon where it said, Tesla has diamond hands. I was like, oh, that's not going to age well. Here we are. Remember, institutions, companies, uh, they don't answer to you. They don't answer to diamond hands are us. They answer to their shareholders, and that's pretty much it. So just remember that once you think institutions are here to save you, they're not. Unless you're a shareholder. <laughs> ah, let's see. Yeah, so O oh, makes a good point. Pi cycle bottom or pi cycle tops. Where did I put that? Uh, da, 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 da. If you guys go to, let me show you my screen. So pi cycle tops. I don't know if they have a pi cycle bottom. I have no idea. But uh, pi cycle tops, it retroactively looks at things. And uh, it states that, that it can accurately predict tops. I'm not for sure on that one because, uh, I mean, even though it looks like it does here, there's some discrepancies, I believe. But uh, there's a lot of great indicators. Uh, and just go to look into Bitcoin. There's this one. There is, what's another great one? Not stock to flow. Hey. You can go a Bitcoin rainbow chart, but not so much. Da, 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 da. Ah, this is a good one. We talked about this yesterday. Net unrealized profit and loss. And you can see in a capitulation, maybe an accumulation zone might be down here. Hope and fear, optimism, belief and denial. I like that one. So what it allow you to do is not to hit the tops because no one hits the tops perfectly, but uh, to get close to it. And then what else was it? Uh, realized price. Yeah, and you can see like right now, it's a pretty decent time to accumulate. Again, uh, that's just for Bitcoin, not a bunch of vaults. Uh, Bitcoin could go down to 14, 13 K. Who knows? I don't know. That's why I dollar cost average. And then when things get a little bit uh, hot like this, I start to say, well, do I really want a dollar cost average right now? I'll still do it, but I'll pull it down. I'll reduce the amount that I dollar cost average in. I'll reduce the amount of days that I dollar cost average and I'll just go from there. Right now, I'm very cautious. I just don't feel like this is it just from these different factors that we talked about today. I could be wrong, I hope I'm wrong, but if I'm wrong and we go up, well, that's fine too. I've got some good positions, but if we go down, well, I can just deploy more on the way down. Why is Luna Classic is up? It's because the miners know which way the winds are blowing. And they're like, well, I guess the merge is gonna happen. So we gotta, we're gonna mine somewhere. Luna Classic is open. And then of course people will pump it up and talk about how great it is and da da da. I don't know. I don't really know it. You should watch uh, Mike the Investor. He's big on Luna Classic. So I don't know enough to say either way. <laughs> so this one, do you like the pi cycle indicator or the stochastic RSI, the relative strength index when looking for the end of a bear market? If you, first of all, I'm not a TA guy, like go to some, there's a ton of other people that are like 10 times better than me. But I mean, when you take a look at the, the stochastic, I call it stochastic fantastic relative strength index, you can kind of see that you can kind of hit these things, but there's been some times when you look, take a look at that RSI and it goes for an extended period of time, especially if you go all the way back to 2017 and you say, oh, this is, this is oversold or this is overbought. This is overbought and it went up like another you know, 25, 30%. So I don't really know about all, those, all of them. You can, what I like to do is aggregate as much as possible, especially moving forward, because I'm trying to formulate a plan for my next bull run exit strategy. And I hope to be out of crypto 80 to 90%. Because if, if you're like me and you believe in the four year cycles and they've been right 12 years straight, um, that's what I'm gonna kind of base some things on. I'm gonna use a lot of indicators and go from there. But again, just because something worked before doesn't mean it's going to work and again. When 17K? I don't know. Chicken, right? Let's see. Brandon says, I think short term, you're probably right. We have such a big pump. We need this correction. True. The long term, I don't see how it can go further down the bottom. Too much support. It's, it's support until it's not. But I hope you're right. 
I don't like, I don't want to be right. I want to be wrong and everybody can have a magnificent bull run and be happier. Yeah, no, you're right. Jag says, if anything negative comes out from my trust, I really think crypto will take another big dip or the government will come in real hard. That's my opinion. And it's a great opinion, and you're right. The thing is, is that it's not the crypto that failed us. It's the centralized institutions that failed us. It was the people that failed us. That's who failed us. So it wasn't the CEO of Bitcoin. <laughs> It just wasn't. It was, I mean, crypto did exactly what it was supposed to do, which is why I'm uh, really a lot more bullish on DeFi protocols like an Aave, like a compound, because did those fail? Those didn't fail. Those worked out pretty damn well. So moving forward, I'll probably get more into that. Piper, maybe a double bottom at 17 and a half and sideways free. Let's, can you imagine how great that would be? 17,500 and then just chop sideways for a full year, all that time to accumulate? Because I don't think Bitcoin's going to zero. It's too much. You know what? I got a friend, uh, I got a friend in, in Puerto Rico and he always, he always says that, uh, he says, you know, Bitcoin maxis, they're like a cult. I was like, yes. And he goes, why you, why you say it so, so affirmatively? I'm like, do you know how great cults are? Not that cults are great, but like a lot of things are cults. And that's what th keeps things going. Have you ever been to like, have you ever done CrossFit? That's kind of cultish if you look at it. Have you ever taken a look at Apple? People stand outside those stupid stores and wait for the, wait for the phones forever. That's like a cult. But that's what, that's what makes things work. They just go forward. They just actually improve, even though like it's crazy. Like I go to my, uh, my chiropractor and he's and I was complaining about my back. He's like, you don't do CrossFit, do you? He's like, yeah. He goes, or I said, no. He says, oh, that's great because like I got tons of clients from CrossFit. And uh, it's the best thing for my practice. It just is, but kind of cultish. Gets you in shape, though. If you, want, if you want eight pack abs and stuff like that, I could care less. But yeah, like cults, uh, that's why I don't think it's going to zero. Jungle Inc. is here, everybody. So, Jungle, cult falling carries through the tough times. Exactly right. People just won't listen. Oh, yeah. And I was going to mention Peloton, but that. Peloton has kind of fallen off a little bit. Just look at their stock price. Yeah, who said this? I'm not talking about that cult, levels of matter. That's crazy cults. I'm talking about financial cults. They do, but those guys, those guys and gals are in shape, though. But I think there's some, some uh, enhancements going on because if you, uh, uh, that's what I think. I'll just say enhancements. Ah, here's a good question. Jesse, Rob, if you had to place your entire allocated cash stack into crypto, either right now or later in the hopes of lower prices, which would you choose? You know, there was a great comment. It was about um, how much you are willing to invest. And of course, what your risk tolerance is. So like for me, I don't really want to be that super risky. I don't really get into like the risky, risky plays. I mean, I gamble. That's called the, my Dan DGen channel. Go check that out if you want to go gambling. That's like three to 5% of my portfolio. I don't really care about that. Like for me personally, like if I just want to grow my wealth just between us, just between the thousand plus people here, uh, I will take that cash and sit on it for about 12 months, maybe 18, and then watch all the housing prices crumble and then buy those houses up. That's probably what it is. Or maybe even a duplex, multifamily, maybe an apartment complex. That'd be great again. Because like that's a, that's a safer bet. And I know people will say, well, what, well if you buy the house, do you resell it? No, 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 no. Because you got to understand, even 2008, 2009, the people that got the most got the richest during that time is when the entire market crashed and they were able to, they had, they were sitting on cash. That's why I still say cash is king. They said, look, I want to buy this house that was worth 250,000 is now worth 110. I'm going to buy that house. I'm not going to resell it because the people that lost their house, guess what? They got to, they got to go somewhere. They got to rent something. I have a rental for you. I will help you out. I will work with you. 
that's that's uh, that what I that's what I would do. Now the next part would be, uh, would you put your stack into crypto right now or later in the hopes of lower prices? Like that's that's like going all in or a value cost averaging. I don't like to do that that much. So what I would do is wait because I'm not smart enough to know exactly where the market's going. I know like some people will say, well, TAs and, and fundamental analysis and sentiment analysis, and it's all great stuff. I used to not like any of them, but but they do have their place. I'm just not smart enough to, to know them all and be 100% sure. So I just kind of take, take something like today and go, there's something off, there's something wrong. I don't know exactly what it is, but I'm not gonna keep dollar cost averaging every single day at this high amount. I'm gonna just cut it back a little bit and just wait to see what exactly happens and go from there. So no, I wouldn't put everything in. I would wait till later. And I don't and even if even if later comes about, I'm still not gonna put everything in. I don't think it's a that's not my that's not how I do things. <sighs> what? Brock Pierce said Bitcoin is gonna see three to five thousand again. I'd like to see that. Let's see. Hi, Robert, your thoughts on Solana? I think Solana is a pretty good buy because uh, it's going down, could, but it could go down even farther, so I'm not buying it right now. That's what's up. Yeah, so people that come greedy and start bending the rules. <laughs> what if we get a triple top? I don't know. Good point. Bored Apes is a cult, perhaps. But again, they're just a, you, they're just a tight-knit community. That's what I'd say. Where are we? And then oh, Rune Andy says it right. Always good to have some dry powder. It's great. It's great because all you got to do is wait. Like the hardest thing, what's harder for you? Is it harder just to uh, dollar just buy every day and then buy the dips? Is that hard? Is it harder to sell? Or is it harder just to sit and wait and do nothing? Don't buy, don't sell, just sit and wait. For me, it's just waiting, but it has to be done. Are you standing? I am standing. I stand all the time. This is a standing desk. Actually, it's a workbench I got from Home Depot. Works out great. Uh, there's a link. Crypto Info Bangla. Hey, Rob, what do you think about Dot and Near Link? I don't know, but I like I like Near. I like that project. It's just so far, it's it's unproven. Sweat. Coin is going to be launched on Near, and that is a massive. It's an app that has over 100 million downloads and millions of users. It's got over 11 million crypto wallets in the last two months. So let's see if they can handle those transactions. If Near can do that, that's a huge shame. But they got to be tested. <laughs> so crushed. Great question. Michael Payne says, "Next Fed meeting, dovish, dovish or hawkish?" I will say it like this. It really just comes down to if Jerome Powell and, and the entire organization, if they say, well, we're going to be data dependent and really stick to that and say, well, we'll see what the, what the data comes out. And then we'll, we'll decide from there, which I think is the right way to do things. Just get the data that comes in, go, okay, here's the unemployment rates. Here's the inflation rates. Here's the whatever. Um, and then just go from there and make their decisions. Great. So I can't tell you. It just is concerning a little bit, like we talked about right here, where this inflation rate was going down, we're doing pretty good, and now we go right back up. So I don't know. That takes time. That's the hardest part, just takes time. See you, Des. The damn part. <laughs> If you think 6% is crushing, you must be new. First time. Enzo says, with everything going on, the, on in the economy, we might definitely go down. I don't know. Like, it's just a weird thing. This is the weirdest time. The unemployment rate is so low. Usually in a recession, recession, you would see these numbers inverted. You would see some uh, rising unemployment rates. But again, we took a look at how they calculate that. So, But it's, I don't know. We'll see. Hey, 
Chewie's here. Uh, let's see. Yeah. There's a balance between buying the dips and building up dry powder. Everyone knows what I mean. <laughs> I think that's it, guys. Uh, Jonathan, AMP's going to be delisted on August 15th on Binance US. I expect other crypto agencies, exchanges to follow. Uh, okay. So that's it, everybody. So look, uh, it's Monday. It's kind of a slowish day. There's a lot of stuff going on, though. Uh, we'll see how the, the week comes out. I don't expect this to really turn around anytime soon. But uh, hey, I've been wrong before. Not surprising. So anyhow, that's it for today. So look, everybody, thanks for stopping by on a Monday. I appreciate you. I do. Uh, just hit the like button on the way out. That always seems to help for some reason. And that's it. So thanks so much for stopping by. I appreciate it, guys. I'll see you guys in the next one, which will be tomorrow. Adios.